And when you are ready, I invite you to open your sweet and beautiful, glorious eyes and recognize that the consciousness that looks through those eyes is divinity itself. Well, again, thank you all for this chance to be with you all this morning. Um, I am delighted to be here and um, happy to have this opportunity to share a few thoughts with you today. And um, I like to engage with the audience, so um, it's a little new for me to have to engage with such a distance, but we know that in the space between us is exactly what Donna was singing about this morning. God, God you are everything, even the space in between, and especially the space in between. I have a story I want to share with you, which happened and began in 1924 in Tokyo. There was a professor that's, that taught at the University of T Tokyo, and his name was Professor Ino. And on his way home from work one day, he found a stray dog. And he decided to take this dog home with him and make him uh, part of his family. So he did just that, and he, he named that dog Hachiko. I need to make sure, yeah, Hachiko. And um, so he brought Hachiko into his home, and they became fast friends, and they bonded with the family. And every day that Professor Inu left and went to off to work, and he came home again, and he got to the railway station, Hachiko would be waiting for him as he got off the train. And this went on for a while, and after a while, um, Professor Inu had a, a hemorrhage, a brain hemorrhage, and he passed away. And that night, Hachiko was at the railway station waiting for him, even though he did not come home. Hachiko came the next night, and the next night, and the next night. Every day, for nine years, waiting for Professor Eno to show up. Now, Hachiko has become an icon for um, Japanese, for the concept of loyalty. But I wonder, what was it that actually made Hachiko show up night after night after night? It wasn't a concept of loyalty, I don't believe. I think it was born of hope. Hope that his master, with whom he loved, would show up. He did this until his own death, nine years later. Love and the power of love and what it can inspire us to do and what it can inspire us to feel is the topic of our time here together today. And I've been thinking about love lately because my sister passed in the end of September, unexpectedly. Um, and it was just a week before we were supposed to go home to be with my mom and my sister to have time together, to cook meals, to play cribbage, to enjoy each other's company, but she fell, and, um, and that didn't happen. And as we were going through all of her things, all of her belongings, I really was thinking about how all of this, which is manifest, all of this, all things, all people, even organizations go through this arc of existence. There's like this concept and this idea, and it comes into birth, and it grows, and it becomes more and it climbs this 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 arc of existence and it gets to a zenith and then there's a certain point in which that zenith starts to decline and things start to decay and eventually they don't exist anymore this is true for our bodies they last so long it's true for organizations they go through this cycle of the bell curve it, it even exists for civilizations who trades in Roman coin anymore. And at that day, nobody thought it would ever end. And yet, all things, all of creation, all of the manifest world goes through this arc of existence, even my sister. And as I was going through her things, I was realizing how precious each moment is. Every single moment is precious. And that the, the, what lies beneath this arc of existence is the very ground of our being. 
that upon which our life depends. It is the firmament upon which I stand right now, the gravity that holds me to this earth. It is the air that's breathing into my lungs so that I can exist, and in two minutes, if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be here. Our lives depend upon that which stands underneath the foundation, the essence of our existence. And love is the only thing, the only thing that will transcend that arc. My love for my sister, the love for Hachiko, for Ino, it's abiding. It does not die. It transcends physical manifestation. You see, our ego gets involved in this realm of the physicality, which is normal. We all do it. We all have this ego that tries to have a, a way we want it to be. We have a, a pathway we prefer, and we have a will of how we want to control things here. And I often call that like thing management. We, we have to wash the house or clean the outside of the siding, which we've been doing the last couple of days. You, you know, you have to paint the, the fascia and the soffits. You know, there's this thing management that we get so caught up in. It, it's, it's part of our human existence, but it is not that essence of who we are. Jesus Christ, when he lived over 2,000 years ago, was talking to the Sadducees, who were the aristocrats of the time. And they were concerned more about um, having wealth and maybe even corruption as much as devotion. And so he was talking to them, and Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. And one of the Sadducees, who's a lawyer of that time, let me tell you, there's some control going on maybe in that. And he, he was like, I'm testing you, Jesus. And he said, what is the most important of the 613 laws in the Torah? Which one's the most important? And Jesus told him, the most important is that you love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest commandment. To love, to love, to love one another, to love God. Next week is about loving one another, but today we're going to learn about loving God. Maya Angelou and Oprah Winfrey were talking, and they were discussing what it was that inspired them. See, Oprah Winfrey finds a mother in Maya Angelou, a confidant, someone she trusts and turns to. And she was asking her confidant, Maya, where she found her comfort. And this was on a Super Soul Sunday, well worth your time to watch if you're interested. But Maya said, well, I am a student of unity. I am a student of unity, and she was taking a class in 2011 that um, was teaching about the Lessons in Truth text that Emily Cady wrote. Maybe some of you have read this. It's well worth the read. She was talking to Oprah, and Oprah and Mayo were sharing, and she said that while she was reading this book, she came across a line that says, God loves me. And she was sharing that with her mentor at the time, and he said, read it again. And he said, God loves me. He said, read it again. God loves me. That which created this firmament, that which holds the stars in the sky, loves me. And she began to cry because she's so moved. She says, I get all good things I can do because God loves me. Can you say that with me? God loves me. Can you say it again? God loves me. God loves me. So it sent me to this text to find that passage. I could not find that passage, but on one page 39, I did find, you are his love. You are his love. And I found a whole lot of other good things here, here too, on page 116. Now please take this to heart. Hear this with your heart. What you want today and what I want is that the words that we have learned to say as truth be made alive in us. We want a revelation of God as love within us. 
so that our whole being will be filled and thrilled with love. A love that will not have to be pumped up by determination because we know it's right to love and it's wrong not to. No, but a love that will flow with the spontaneity and the fullness of an artesian well. Because it is so full at the bottom, it must flow out. We want the manifestation of us, of the Father, in us, so that we can know him personally. That is what Jesus was teaching us. How to tap into, how to allow that love to flow through us. It reminded me of when I was in seminary. I was um, in a class with Dr. Vern Barnett. He was the head of the Crest Foundation, which was an interfaith organization in the Kansas City area, a beautiful organization. And he was teaching us world religions. And he simplified the whole thing down into some golden nuggets that I want to share with you today. Dr. Vern Barnett said that all of the basic primary faith families have a different way of finding the sacred. And how he defined sacred was what our life depends upon. The primal faiths, Native American, Mayan, Incan, etc., those faiths find the sacred in nature. The Asian faiths find it in our consciousness. And the monotheistic faiths, of which Christianity is one, find it in relationship. Relationship. Now, I think that there's merit in all of these methods. And if we actually combine these methods, we actually might discover the divine. So, if we become attentive to the beauty that is all around us, with our consciousness, what relationship might unfold. The beauty way is a way of the Navajo, American, Native American tradition. To walk in the beauty way is to be attentive and aware of the beauty and the essence of all that is around us. Now this isn't a superficial form that I'm attached to, or it's particular aesthetics on a superficial level. No, this is an action and a way of being in relationship with all of life as it is unfolding. In other words, to be in harmony with divinity as creation in this moment to walk in the way of beauty. Can we in each moment walk in that way of beauty? Dr. David R. Hawkins, a psychologist, author, amazing teacher, he said that our consciousness is divinity. He was sharing that in a lecture and he actually stopped in the middle of the lecture and he tested that with a kin kin uh, muscle testing response. And it said, yes, this is true that our consciousness, our conscious awareness, is the presence of divinity. So when we take our consciousness, I had a friend, Brenda Walding, who was sharing with me about this beauty way and how it was coming alive to her. She said that as she was listening to a teacher, it, he was saying to her, he said, when we stop and we become aware, aware of a tree, or a bush or a flower and we put our consciousness on the recognition of the essence of the life within that in that moment something opens in us and we begin to relate to it we begin to relate and the opening of love begins that's where the capacity of that presence and that power flows through us. Emily Cady shares with us a couple of other ideas. This time on page 99. She says, all of the teachings of Jesus were for the purpose of leading us to our consciousness of our oneness with the Father. 
In other words, he told them how to find the kingdom of heaven within, the kingdom of love. You may easily grasp this with the mind, the statement that God is the giver of all good gifts, of life, of health, of love. Or you may go farther and see that God is not only the giver, but the gift itself. He is the life, the love, and the health in us. Do you feel that? I feel a chill up my spine. Do you feel that? That this presence and this power that Jesus has taught us to love with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, with our entire existence, he's coaching us to turn our attention from the world around us, that finite level of existence that ends, and turn it to the very ground of our being. It is said that there in the space of one cubic centimeter of space, the Godhead mind, that which has created you and loves you beyond fathom, that there is more in that empty space of the Godhead than there is of all of creation and all of time. Do you know what that means to us? That means that we are having the capacity to be in relationship with a presence and a power that is everywhere and knows everything and has everything that we ever could want, ever. It is not a certain direction of an election that we want. It's the presence and the power of the life force within us that is begging us to be in relationship with it because it has loved us with an everlasting love. You know, Hachiko and how much he loved the professor? Can you take that amount of love and magnify it to the greatest capacity? I think Google is like the biggest amount of numbers that we've ever known, right? Well, we know Google now, don't we? Well, what if, like, if it was the internet? What if God's love was as expansive as the internet? What if God's love was deeper than the center of the earth that it went to the farthest horizons of all of existence and beyond that as you breathe through this day it's going to be standing at the gateway of this of that railway of your soul waiting for you to turn your attention to it God is everything we have ever wanted or ever will want so it helps us to say no not my preference not my will, not my control, not my small idea of what life needs to be today. Thy will be done. Thy life flow through me like an artesian well springing forth through me because I can't contain it. Because I want to love you, Stormy, so much, so really, and seize this day to the greatest of my capacity to allow that Godhead of the artesian well of the eternal love to flow through me because I can't contain it. That is what moved my Angelo to tears. Can we know that? Can we live that? Can we love that with the depth of our soul? And I say yes, yes Lord, yes. Thy will be done. Let me walk in the beauty way. So I want to leave you with some homework. If you are so willing to accept the assignment, if not, it will be gone just like the uh, Mission Impossible, but this one's possible. This one's very possible. Our teacher in our way shower said it's absolutely possible. So if you should choose to accept this assignment, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, we can do two, two things. I have two very practical things. One is dust off your cover of Lessons in Truth and reread it because I can guarantee you that it's well worth your time and energy. Or here's another one. This is my favorite. Uh, Brother Lawrence. It's called The Practice of the Presence of God. This one's worth marinating in daily. Read a letter every night. Um, and I want to close our time with great love, with the expandedness of our hearts and minds in the capacity of allowing the God love 
to flow through us as us with a prayer from Dr. David Hawkins. And this lecture was in 2011, at probably about the same time Maya Angelou was taking her class in Lessons in Truth. And this lecture that he spoke about was on love. So let's join together in a closing prayer. These are Dr. David Hawkins' words. I pray for that inner experience of divine love for everyone here present now. God bless you in the name of the Lord, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us here today. Love and blessings to each and every one of you.